Pulsars are highly magnetized rotating compact stars, typically neutron stars, though not all neutron stars are pulsars and not all pulsars are neutron stars. They emit beams of electromagnetic radiation from their magnetic poles, which need not be aligned with their axis of rotation. This means that as the star rotates, the beams sweep across the sky like an enormous cosmic lighthouse. This is where the name pulsar comes from, as the star itself does not actually pulse. Instead, we see the beam from the star as it passes over Earth which periodically increases the star's apparent brightness. They have made appearances in science fiction TV shows, movies and video games with varying levels of accuracy. Sometimes they are just a hazard, and other times they are simply there to look pretty, though they can also be used as reference points due to their consistent rotation. In the Season 2 episode of Star Trek Enterprise called Regeneration, Borg survivors from the time-travelling sphere from First Contact managed to send a message to the Collective in the Delta Quadrant. This message of repeating numbers turned out to be pulsed our frequencies and light year distances, triangulating the location of Earth. This was based on the real-world Pioneer plaque, which includes a series of lines corresponding to 14 pulsars, with the rotational period of each noted in binary. This map is also on the Voyager Golden Record, which briefly shows up in Star Trek The Motion Picture in the memory banks of Vija. A copy of the plaque was also in the office of Rain Robinson in the Voyager 2-parter Future's End, as well as being part of the SETI greeting that she sent to the USS Voyager. The Battlestar Galactica remake also made use of pulsars as a navigational aid. In the Season 3 episode, Torn, the Scrolls of Pythia refer to a great lion with a mighty blinking eye, red and blue. Lieutenant Felix Gator found astronomical references to a pair of pulsars in a nebula, one red and one blue. A raptor was sent to check and found that it matched the description given in the scrolls. The real Vela Pulsar is one example of a pulsar wind nebula, powered by the intense magnetic fields of the star at its core. Some settings make use of pulsars more directly for travel, such as Wing Commander, where they generate thousands of jump points for FTL travel. The Wing Commander Academy episode Expendable shows the crew of the TCS Tiger's Claw exploring a stable jump line between two pulsars. In the 1999 Wing Commander film, the TCS Tiger's Claw itself makes a jump using an uncharted Class II pulsar, though the pulsar is depicted more like a storm cloud than a star. Elite Dangerous takes using a pulsar for travel to the extreme, as ships using super crews can dive into the relativistic jets to harvest exotic particles. This supercharges its frameshift drive, dramatically increasing the maximum jump range by up to 300%. These jumps can be chained together along the so-called Neutron Highway, decreasing long-distance travel times across the galaxy. Pulsars found other uses in Star Trek, such as in the Next Generation episode We'll Always Have Paris, where Dr. Paul Mannheim was using the dense gravity of the Van Dor Pulsar for his experiments with time and dimensions. The Pathfinder project that was introduced in the Voyager episode Pathfinder made use of a Class B itinerant pulsar to create an artificial wormhole to the Delta Quadrant, enabling brief communications with the distant USS Voyager. Space-based video games frequently make use of pulsars as part of galactic terrain, such as in Sins of a Solar Empire, where they cause nearby ships to take increased damage and have reduced accuracy. They commonly have some effect on shielding if the setting includes them, such as in Stellaris, where any ship or structure in a pulsar system is completely stripped of shields. The crystalline entities also make their home around a pulsar. In EVE Online, the opposite happens. Ships have increased shield capacity, but decreased armor resistances and an increase in their ship signature size. Energy neutralizers and Nosferatus also have increased effectiveness. All these effects are permanently applied to anything in range, essentially averaging out the effects of the beams from the star. FTL Advanced Edition keeps the pulsing effect when fighting near a pulsar. Your ship and the enemy will periodically have random systems ionized, forcing power out of the ship systems. Star Sector takes the idea of pulsars being terrain a step further, with safe travel in a pulsar system only being possible in the gaps between beams, though a fleet can hide behind another celestial body to wait for a beam to pass. If caught in one, a fleet will be blown off course and have their combat readiness rapidly reduced, eating through supplies as crews desperately try to keep their craft spaceworthy. Nowhere are pulsars more deadly than in the Slider's two-parter, Exodus. The heroes of the show arrive through a wormhole on an alternate reality Earth, where a group of strangely small, unrealistically rock-like pulsars are heading for the planet, with their beams poised to wipe out all life. The team has to assist military researchers with their own experimental wormhole technology to evacuate as many people as possible, and only barely make it to a safe haven before the entire planet explodes. The destructive potential of pulsars is somewhat toned down in Star Trek, but still enough to damage ships travelling nearby. 
In the Next Generation episode, Allegiance, Captain Jean-Luc Picard is replaced with a double who orders the USS Enterprise to a pulsar in the Lonka Cluster as part of an alien experiment into the concept of leadership. The ship's shields are significantly attrited before this experiment was unmasked and the Enterprise moved to safety. A similar story happens in Season 4 of Voyager in the episode Scientific Method. After her crew begins to die, Captain Catherine Janeway makes the somewhat reckless decision to fly directly between a double pulsar binary. The extreme environment between the dense stars forces the alien invaders to evacuate and damages the USS Voyager as it speeds between them. At least one double pulsar binary does exist in reality, PSR J0737-3039, and the youngest of the pair implies the formation of a neutron star without involving a supernova. Returning to Star Trek, in the first episode of the second season of Discovery, the eponymous ship finds the USS Hiawatha crash-landed on an unusual asteroid. The Discovery bounces off the strange gravity well of the asteroid, sending it on a collision course with a pulsar. A different type of neutron star with even stronger magnetic fields is called a magnetar, and some of these can also be pulsars. Such a star makes an appearance in My Own Worst Enemy, the third episode of Season 2 of Another Life. It sent out directional waves of energy that caused two ships to drop out of FTL, as well as having a severely damaging effect on Akaya technology. Another peculiar pulsar appears in the Stargate Universe episodes Incursion and Intervention. The star's interaction with the accretion disk of its binary partner led to a huge burst of gamma radiation every 46 minutes and 37.6 seconds. The Destiny shields were barely able to hold these bursts back and needed to be reconfigured before they could escape. A pulsar interacting with its binary partner has also been observed in real life in AR Scorpii, where the beams from a pulsar sweep across the surface of the red dwarf that it orbits, causing the larger star to pulse. Also, this is currently the only known white dwarf pulsar. There are a number of appearances of pulsars where they are simply there or had some influence on the environment in the past. The first of these is a system of five pulsars seen in the Farscape episode Crackers Don't Matter, though they look like regular main sequence stars. Star Trek Lower Decks has a more accurate representation in its second episode Envoys, when the USS Cerritos passes by the Trivoli Pulsar. Another pulsar is encountered in The Sojourn, where the star is a location of interest for the Avalon expedition. Upon arrival, a planet was also discovered in orbit around the pulsar, which had been affected by the supernova of the collapsing star, but not enough to destroy it. In reality, there are pulsars with planets, such as the famous PSR B1257 plus 12, also known as Lich. The three known planets around this star, named Draugr, Poltergeist and Phobator, were the first extrasolar planets ever discovered. This was a surprise to astronomers, as they had only expected to find planets around main sequence stars. Finally, Freelancer depicts a system that was obliterated by the supernova that gave birth to the pulsar at its heart, Omega-41. Not only is the system filled with the remnants of the planets that once existed, but the intense radiation from the star makes long-term habitation near impossible. Throughout their many appearances in science fiction, pulsars have shown they are one of the more interesting and beautiful objects in the universe. And if we missed any, please let us know in the comments.